does it matter what Nico Ia Maliava does at the spring game at all to you, Caleb Calhoun? No. No, Josh Heupel is uh, – I'm telling you guys this right now. Josh Heupel is bitter and resentful that he has to have a spring game. And he tried – I guarantee you he and Danny White, they tried to work on the idea of construction at Neyland Stadium during this time because Josh Heupel doesn't like showing anything. And so he's not going to show anything. So he's going to trot Nico out there, play him a couple of drives. He might have Nico make some nice throws here or there. Then he's going to have Jake Merklinger and Gaston Moore and Navy Schuler and – we're going to get some headlines in a week, um, which is basically – basically the, the headlines we're going to get in a week are Gaston Moore looks like he could be the quarterback in case Nico goes down. We'll have about five articles written on that because Josh Heupel is going to make him look amazing in the spring game. Just well, and a lot of people are saying you wouldn't even play him. Now, when you say don't play him, that means full pads, scrimmage situations. I'm assuming that you would like to see him go through some quarterback drills, right? I would like to, I, th I think you would like to see him throw it around a little bit. I mean, not, not to play him all together, but guys, I mean, a non contact injury could happen if he stepped off a uh, sidewalk somewhere. So let's not be overly crazy about how careful you are of this young man he's a very good athlete he's not gonna stumble upon something and hurt himself i mean he might but you can't protect him at all times here no you can't what you could do is i don't know if you were covering this dave but i was um in 2017 butch jones did a skills challenge for the spring game for different positions oh i remember that and actually i do not hate that idea so i'll go ahead and throw that out there you just have to be very careful of what they do uh, yes um, yeah hitting moving tar the quarterbacks are having to hit moving targets and things like that just do that look these spring games are i feel like let's talk about the overall goal of spring practice i think the most important thing with spring practice is to get newcomers a jump on kind of get newcomers a jump on developing with the offense and just helping yourself become a little bit more familiar with what's going on with the with, with the system. Is that fair to say? Like, yes. it's about just getting more familiar with the system more than anything else. Listen, if your spring practice is done and nobody got hurt with the exception of Cam Selden, and I, am I missing anyone? I don't think I am. I don't but think Cam Selden, that, that is, that's called a win. That's an A right there. Right there. I don't care what else you've done. And then if you've gotten to the point where you feel good about one, uh, one or two other positions, that's an A+. Plus. Listen, spring camp is not what spring camp used to be. Spring camp used to be the one opportunity to throw on shells, used to be the one opportunity to throw on multiple levels of pads. Now, I'm not saying they go full pads during the summer, but they do. So it's not what it used to be, Caleb, of here's your opportunity to go really practice football. They're really practicing football in the summer as well. Yeah, well, and I'll, I mean, the most important thing is – how committed are the players to practicing football when the coaches can't actually run practices in the summer, right? That's really what tells you about how good your team is. I mean, you've talked about the 98 team a lot in the sense of they were doing regular workouts and just all did not need coaches or conditioning coaches or anybody to tell them to get ready, right? They were focused in the summer no matter what. Yeah, and they were they were zoned in, and I expect this crew will be like that. Now, your linemen are going to focus on building mass during the summer. They're going to focus on building mass during the winter workout, so they're not going to be as involved in skelly drills and things like that, but they're still going to be going through footwork drills, so they're going to be getting an, an awful lot done. So don't think this is just open up spring camp, get a little bit better, and then close it and see what happens because it's going to be – much more than that. The Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Go to Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. Hemp House Chat with 2Ts.com. Use the promo code HOOKED for 10% off. The promo code HOOKED for 10% off. And I remind you that portions of the program are brought to you by our good friends at Dynasty Pools and Spots. Here, you know, the best thing about Dynasty Pools and Spas is that they've got it all taken care of. What does that mean? Well, you stop by their showroom and check out their fantastic selection of top notch spas in that showroom in Athens. Make your pick and get ready because Dynasty Pools and Spas delivers within 125 miles of that location in Athens, that fantastic showroom. They've got the cover, the cover lifts, steps, chemicals, and everything you need. Delivery at no extra charge. 
that's just down the road in Athens. You pick the spa you want, and it'll be there for you. Oftentimes discounted with military and first responders discounts. Also blemish models, or just mention Off the Hook Sports. That's Off the Hook Sports for $500 off. There's a discount for you on spas made right here in East Tennessee. Support local. Dynasty Pools and Spas also has the best chemicals for you and your spa and your pool. No fillers, just the chemicals made right here in East Tennessee. Support local Dynasty Pools and Spas, $500 off if you mention Off the Hook Sports. $500 off if you mention Off the Hook Sports. Dynasty Pools and Spas, DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com. I'm curious what most of you would like to see. We haven't done a good job on the poll question. Would you rather go out there and watch Nico Ia Maleava throw for 350 yards and be a star in the spring game or just shake his hand and say good luck? In the spring, shake his hand and say good luck. I mean, the, these particularly, I've covered enough of them now too myself. I just, they you don't gather anything from these um, type of games. Now, it's, I, I will say this, you know, I figure, you know, I have covered some spring games where I saw quarterbacks weaknesses early on because, I mean, again, you can just have them throwing out against air and you can tell if they can throw or not. I mean, I, I, there was the Quentin Dormady, Jerry Garantano race in 2017, and I thought Dormady was better from the start. Um, Butch Jones then benched Dormandy halfway through the year to try to save his own job and try to scapegoat him for things going wrong in 2017. So that was an issue. Um, I think, um, I think in general, though, yeah, I, I, I never was a the biggest fan of these, particularly when you're right, they're holding everybody out if they're not ready. Um, I think it's just. To me, spring practice is a lot of just making sure you're not super rusty when fall camp starts. Like, okay, you got your feet wet a little bit, and then you have summer workouts and things like that, and then things get really rigid in the fall. But, I mean, hell, it's funny because there's more people on the roster now for spring camp, Dave, than there used to be. It used to be like none of the enrollees were there for spring camp, right? None of the signees were there for spring camp. Yeah. Maybe one or two. There. If, you got, if you got like two, it was a big, big deal. So the last poll question was, do you care if Lady Vols win in year one under Kim Caldwell? Yes, a bit. Got 58%. And no, the roster's bad. Got 22%. Yes, a lot. They're ready. Got 18%. So now the new poll question that I have on our YouTube page, and I would love for you to go ahead and vote right there. Because the spring game, and I had somebody reach out to me that they're an, an advertiser, not just with us, but with other companies as well and they're charging right now about twenty five hundred dollars to go over there and have a setup to be in front of all those fans but there's only going to be ten thousand people at the game and then when we asked that question first thing out of the shoot we had a lot of people that said it's just a money grab it's just a money grab my thoughts on the the orange and white game and i think it's very doable now whereas it may not have been in previous years, play Clemson. Play somebody for the orange and white game that you don't play in the fall. I think that would be really exciting. For the record, uh, would you rather see Nico light it up, uh, light up the orange and white game, or shake his hand and say good luck? 62% say see him light up the orange and white game. Only 38% say shake his hand and good luck. Well, the majority is wrong in this situation. They're just factually wrong. So I'm calling out the majority. <laughs> um, I say shake his hand and say good luck and don't I would barely even play him. I get your point. Well, you gotta remember though, a lot of a lot of these people don't have the same inside knowledge that we have. You and I have what, maybe a shred, one percent doubt that Nico won't make it. I've always got some doubt for anybody, but you and I are probably on a different plane of of believing in him as a player right now. No, that that's very true. I, I, you know, people have talked about this for a while because it's funny you say Clemson because people have argued for, I guess, kind of an exhibition college football game. I've always rejected that. I feel like college football was fine as it is. Half of the teams play tune-up games to open the year anyway in their first weekend. So that's true. And the one thing you would not want is somebody to get hurt in one of these games or to get chippy at all. So yeah, when you exactly. get, when you get in the world of X. When you put those two words together, exhibition football, you've got a potential major problem because somebody's going to play harder than the other crew 
because they've got something to prove. It happens in NFL preseason all the time. It would happen in my idea, too. I just think it would be neat. I think it would get everybody's attention. Oh, I'm sure it would. I'm sure not it would. Something it would I'm, kind not of like something I'm married to. Well, I mean, doesn't the NFL like have like in the fall and August, they have like player diff- opposing teams yeah. practicing on the same field and practicing against each other and like fights break out all the time when that happens. They do. It? And there's chippiness. And I will go ahead and tell you now that I believe that Josh Heupel would absolutely hate it. Oh, he would absolutely despise it. Josh Heupel would absolutely despise this to no end. It would drive him crazy to have this level to, to have something like that during the spring. Josh Heupel's probably spending half the spring anyway, trying to devise new schemes for his offense. I think Josh Heupel's offense. You may, I think, I think he, I think he works a lot in the offense, trying to adapt it as much as possible. Honestly, uh, I do too. I, I don't think that he is a big fan of all the stuff that goes on with. Uh, football and being a high level coach. I think that he, and I believe this firmly, I think he likes Tennessee because I think he sees it being big enough, but manageable as far as the media, he takes pride in going to a press conference and saying absolutely nothing. He does. And also Tennessee, the great thing about Tennessee for him is that it's so big. A lot of the day-to-day stuff that other coaches would be expected to run. He can get other people to run that stuff where he is. 